definitely negative x because we have different signs. We subtract some bigger number. For sure, negative x. Now, you tell me, are we looking for negative x or are we looking for x? x. This, is not, this isn't good enough for us, then. This is not good enough for us. How in the world do we get rid of the negative? Divide by negative 1. Negative to both sides. Explain that. Divide by negative 1. Why? Because there's a negative 1 in yeah, I know a lot of you guys are so so fond of doing this, writing 1x, right? Everyone loves writing 1x. Well, that means the same thing as x, right? Or vice versa, negative x means the same thing as negative 1x, doesn't it? Or negative 1 times x. You could just divide by negative 1. If we divide by negative 1, here the negatives are gone. That's essentially all, all you're doing. You're changing the signs. X equals, what's negative 4 divided by negative 1, folks? 4, positive 4. Positive 4 is it. Hey, do you remember how whenever you have just a negative in front of parentheses, essentially all it did was change every sign inside of that? That's basically what you're doing here. If you have negative X, listen carefully, please, if you want to learn something kind of quick thing. If you have negative X equals negative number or negative X equals a number, all you do to get positive x, just change the signs. That's all, all we're really doing. We're dividing by a negative. That's a negative 1. That's just changing the signs. Not your head if you're with me. Yeah. You guys in the back there? Yeah. Okay, good. Well, let's bring up some old school stuff. Would you be able to do this problem? Yeah. I hope so. What's this problem entail? Multiplication. Why? More specifically, than multiplication is we're saying again some distributing. Distributing. That's right. So we're distributing. You can do that, right? <coughs> now watch. Look. Look. look at the I'm going to do one more thing to this. Instead of just distributing, now I'm going to say, okay, let's make this equal to <coughs> 10x. Let's make it equal to 10x. What are we going to do? Well, the first thing you got to do is simplify both sides. Listen, in order to solve equations, you got to have something that looks like this. You got to have something that looks like that, or something that looks like this one. You got to have that. So, in order to solve our equations, the very first thing we're going to do, we're going to simplify both sides first. Simplify both sides first. What that means for you, if you're going to simplify both sides, that means you might have to distribute. And here we didn't have to distribute, we had no parentheses. But here, you guys just said, right? You said, didn't you? You're going to distribute that. So you might have to distribute, and you might have to combine some like terms. That's what simplifying means. It means distribute. If you have parentheses, and it also means combine like terms if you have some like terms. LT, like terms. Oh, let's give this a try. This is putting together a lot of good stuff, right? We just learned about distribution. So now we get to distribute, we get to combine some like terms, and we get to solve equations. You guys hit the jackpot today, didn't you? I mean, my goodness, the only thing would be better is if I have a whole box of pump pumpkins up here for you. I'm going to bring that up every day till Halloween, you know that, right? You know pumpkins are going up in cost? Did I tell you about that? Anybody go home and try the, the, um, the tortilla pizza that I was talking about? I'm out of tortillas. Out of tortillas. I'm not even out of tortillas. Like Costco, four tortillas for like three dollars. It's the best. Okay, so refresh my memory. You don't need ingredients. You can pasta sauce and pepperoni. Yeah, I guess so. It is gross. It's really not that good. Is it really not good? No. Why are you trying to make this easy? Just say it. You look so like you convinced me that it was kind of good when you turned around. Like, anybody try it? Yeah, no, it's not good. It sounds like, it's like a pink burrito. 
Pizza Rito. Oh, oh Pizza Rito. You should invent that, Jeff. Be a millionaire. But this is on video, so I have I have uh, rights to that. Oh, that is true. <laughs> so Pizza Rito. If you sell that, I get like twenty. Let's say twenty percent. Deal? You're gonna ask. You're gonna just say twenty percent. <laughs> yes, or whatever. Love it. Okay, let's go ahead and see if we refresh my memory on how you distribute this thing. What do you do to distribute, please? Three three. Notice how we're ignoring the side of the equation right now. We're just focused on the left-hand side and doing what we've done for a long time now, which is just distribute. 3 times 3x, everybody gives you what? 9x. Minus what? Good, because we do 3 times negative 7, that gives us negative 21. We're going to write minus 21. We practiced that a lot yesterday. 10x doesn't change, and now we have something we can work with. But this looks a little different to you, I hope. Yeah. I want you to take a look at this, please. I showed this to you one, one time before. Do you have any like terms? No. Good. Like terms are on, different, are on the same side of the equation. So here we don't have like terms. Listen carefully. This is why you do what I told you to do before. You have to somehow get your x's to one side. We have to remove one of these x's completely. The only way you can do it is by addition or subtraction. What we're going to look for in this case is the smaller of the two variables. What's the smaller variable? Okay. So we're going to eliminate the smaller variable by either addition or subtraction. What do I need to do here for our 9x? Add or subtract? Subtract. subtract. Now watch what happens in terms of like terms. It's kind of interesting. If I subtract 9x, don't I also have to do it over here? Yeah. Watch, as soon as I do that, what I do to one side, I do to the other. Now do you see these are on the same side of the equation? Now they're like terms. Now we can combine them. That's why we do what we do. On the left-hand side, the 9x's are gone. What am I going to have on the left-hand side? Left-hand side. On the right-hand side, 10x minus 9x gives you? X. Do you need to do any more work? No. You're done. X is negative 21. That's kind of nice. That's kind of nice. Why don't you try one of these on your own, OK? So if you want a note for this one, by the way, you're going to eliminate the smaller variable first. Or eliminate the smaller variable by addition and subtraction. Have you guys done all this already? Wow. That's good. Must be really good at your distribution or something. So when we start our problem, we're looking for anything we need to simplify. On the left-hand side, we're good. We just have 13x. You can't do much with that right now. On the right-hand side, though, we've got the 4 being distributed across those parentheses. That's what we learned how to do throughout the entire last section. We're just distributing a positive 4. So we're taking positive 4 times positive 3x and getting 12. We're taking positive 4 times what we consider that to be negative 1 and get negative 4. Perfect. So we write minus 4. Now tell me the next step that I'm going to do. Well, Good. That's our smaller variable. So if I get rid of my smaller variable, which is the 12x, it's got to be by addition subtraction. Now, for some people, this gets a little confusing because I know that before when we had like a number out in front, we divide. But notice how we don't even have our x's together yet. The appropriate step is not to divide by 12 here. All that would do is eliminate the 12, not the x. If you divide by 12x, you have x's everywhere. Your problem's going to explode. Your paper's going to go, what are you doing to me? Please, don't ruin me. You have to erase all this. Come on, man. 
Yeah, you don't want to do that. If we get rid of the smaller variable by addition and subtraction, it removes the entire thing. It moves it over to the other side. That's what we want to do. So we subtract our 12x. That's our smaller variable from both sides. Left-hand side, 13x minus 12x, we get x. Right-hand side, we get four. Yeah, you're done. Now, the thing about this is, this is kind of, well, these are unique examples, aren't they? Because this, is, this has been like only one, one number apart here, and only one number apart here. And so we've got x every time, not coincidentally, I set these problems up so we would get that. But does that happen all the time, do you think? No. So we need to focus on a different type of problem. Because right now we've just had one steppers, basically. One step problems after we combine like terms. We need to focus on what happens if I don't have a one step problem. See, before, if I just gave you this, what's on the board? Watch on the board. If I just gave you this, you could do that, right? Yeah. yeah. You'd add five. If I just gave you this, you could do that. You'd yeah. just divide by three. But now when I give you this, you have a combination of things <laughs> that's happening to this y. We've got to know what to do when. So when we have 3y minus 5 equals 16, firstly, is this an equation? Yes. Definitely. What's your variable? Y. y. I've got two things happening to y. Y is being multiplied by 3. Y is also being subtracted by 5. We've got to get rid of both of those things. The question is, which one do you do first? Now, before you answer, before you answer and just shout something out, let me explain to you how to think about this process, okay? The process is we're trying to undo the things around our y variable. Listen carefully to what I'm saying here. Try to undo things, right? If you're undoing, it's kind of like you're going backwards. If you get, when you get up in the morning, well, you, unless you just sleep in your clothes that you wear during the day, which whatever, you know, it's up to you, I'm not judging. But you probably put clothes on, right? You probably put, hopefully, your, your socks on before your, your shoes, true? <laughs> That looked really silly the other way around. You probably get blisters. No one wants blisters. So you put your socks on and then you put your shoes on. To get undressed, do you take your socks off first or your shoes off first? So we're going in the reverse order of what we'd normally do. In other words, in this example, we're going the opposite of order of operations. Does that make sense? We're undoing things. So if you get dressed in the morning, you go socks then shoes. That's building an equation. If you get undressed, you go shoes then socks. That's undoing an equation. We are undoing equations right now. So when you look at this problem, we go, okay, 3 is being multiplied by y and subtracting by 5. We're going to go reverse order of operations on our equations, which means that the first thing we get rid of is anything that is added or subtracted. So we're doing sad map. Sad map. Sad map. That's right. You go in reverse. You're undoing your equation. If you try to divide by 3, you're going to have a problem. What we need to get rid of first is the constant. Any constant term gets eliminated first by addition and subtraction. So write that down, please. The first thing you do, you get rid of the constant term first. 